feeling? We still, uh, we're in the middle of workouts, spring break? Yeah, we, yeah, we just finished a, uh, a workout here. How'd you do? Not a lot of sit front. Good. Yeah, it was good. There's a lot of guys that come down here to to train. Caleb's down here and uh, Caleb who? Travis. Uh, Williams. Caleb, Caleb Williams. Yeah. He's right there? Yeah, maybe I wasn't supposed to say that, but yeah. Yeah. How's he look? Doing a good job. How's he look? Rid- ridiculous. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. There's been a lot of chatter, you know. Like, we, after his pro day at SC, we saw him roughhousing with his teammates. Mm-hmm. Thought that was a big deal. Legitimately thought that was a big he, deal. He, he, and that's legit. It, that's he, he's, I think the, he's kind of become an internet thing. And it's like, once you fall into that tidal wave, you can't get out of it. What did he What did he do the other day? They they thought he had pink lipstick and a pink phone and mm-hmm. yeah. pink fingernails. Like, it just seems like it just seems like um, I just saw him. He didn't have any of that. It just it just, it just seems like once you go into that, uh, you you just become you know it's like a it's like a thing. A narrative. Know? Once and, a narrative is started, yeah. we are going to yeah. find everything to continue that narrative. Is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. And then there's reality that doesn't align with any of that. So. But no, he's he's. We know what he can do on the field. But no, he's he's actually a really good guy. His teammates love him. I don't know if that if, if the internet mm-hmm. agrees with that or not. But the, the teammates tend to love the guy. Go ahead, AJ. Speaking of him, Kirk, what does he do? Like, what does Caleb do to set himself apart from the other, like the rest of the pack? We know there's a lot of these quarterbacks gonna gonna, gonna go high in this draft. What does Caleb do? That's it feels like he's gonna be the number one pick, obviously. But what is like? Why do you think he deserves that? Well, the, the first game I called of his was at the uh, the game in Dallas when he was at OU, and he came in for Spencer Rattler, who was a Heisman front runner that year. Um, and by the way, I think Spencer Rattler mm-hmm. could be a steal this year in the draft. I don't know where he's going to go, but I, I keep a close eye on him. He's grown up a lot, matured a lot from his days when he was in Norman, ended up doing pretty good at South Carolina. But I, uh, I, I think what separates him is what you can see on these highlights. His physical skill set is – is, you know, everyone's going to compare him to Patrick Mahomes. Um, it's the ability to create. I think what people want to see is him be more consistent with, you know, playing within the confines of the offensive structure. You know, I think a lot of times at SC, as you can watch these highlights, a lot of times he's getting outside and he's off platform and he's creating. I think what people will see once he gets to Chicago is the growth and the players around him and just being able to hit those layups, you know, the, the easy plays. Not every play has to be a home run. You know, it's just a single, single, single. Then the doubles and triples and home runs come. And I think he's anxious to show people. And I think that's why his pro day was, you know, I, you know, I listened to a lot of people break down his pro day, which I don't, again, I don't know what that's worth, but um, <laughs> he chose not to be one of these guys that had like a Zach Wilson mm-hmm. workout, you know, where they did a lot of different things. It was more, I think if I remember right, he just threw from the pocket. You know, it was just kind of a generic workout. It wasn't all the, you know, uh, breaking out of, out of the pocket and, and creating. I think his point was he wanted to prove to people and just kind of show people that that's, that's a big part of his game, that he has a lot of confidence in. So I think that what separates him, A.J., is he's played a lot of football. He's probably has more physical ability than anybody that's come out of the draft in a long time. And I think that's what gets everybody really excited about what he can do. Yeah, we're all zeked up mm-hmm. to see what he can pull off. Now, can his game translate? You you call Thursday night, obviously called his games as well Saturday nights. His game can translate to the NFL, you think? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think there's any doubt. I, I think a lot of times we get caught up in the college quarterback and his skill set transitioning up to the NFL. And I think it just watching and calling a lot of these games and a lot of, a lot of shitty like offensive structure games. Yeah. It's, it's to me as much about the scheme and the players around the quarterback as it is the quarterback trying to prove that he can play in the NFL. And don't get me wrong, it's not all on the offensive coordinator and, and the scheme, but just I, I've told you guys this in the past. Think about being a 34 or 38 year old offensive coordinator in the game today. You, you grew up with the digit system or the West Coast offense, and now you're having to learn. How to handle a guy like Caleb Williams, how to handle, you know, Andy Reid, he went back to school himself to be able to put in a totally different system around Patrick Mahomes skill set. And now we have this this Kansas City offense that we all love to watch every week. But that's not who Andy Reid was 10 years ago. You know, give him a lot of credit for evolving as a play caller himself. And I think that's 
that's on the the structure of the offensive scheme. If you if you go out and get Caleb Williams, you've got to adjust your scheme to his skill set and what he does really well. If you want to tap into his his potential, don't always make that college guy. This is the National Football League. You have to learn our way. That doesn't work, I think, in the modern game. I think it's more about the guys that win. They're they're adjusting their their offense to these college schemes, and those are the guys that put points up on the board on Sunday. Hey, can you uh, can you look at your screen right now and just hit the mute button? That's basically what you were doing with your hand covering that speaker. <laughs> yeah. For most of your answer, mm-hmm. most of your answer, yeah, most of your answer, yeah, most. Of, he was Dude, good. I get I get hey. caught up in a thought and I forget about <laughs> this over here. Everything you said was I right, gotta, though. I gotta, I gotta I gotta stay here for you. No, hey, we appreciate that you're taking time. We're just talking shit. But speaking of that, like if Caleb has success at Chicago, Eberflus, defensive court, mm-hmm. defensive coach, they're gonna have to find, you know, yeah. next one up. That'll be that'll be. Hey, th- dude, that's dude, a, go ahead. Right now, I'm telling you this, I had the Bears twice. When they made that trade and they got a lot better on the defensive side. Sweat. When Sweat came over and the secondary got healthy, I'm telling you, everybody expected Iberflus to get let go middle of the year. The guy had an energy about him. His team responds to him. You better get on the Bears right now. You better get on oh, the Bears. The Bears wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, by low. And I'm not a Bears guy. I don't, give a, I don't know anything about – I don't care about the Bears. I'm just saying – they are the Detroit Lions from a couple of years. Like, they're uh, uh, coming. Uh, the, the Bears are coming. Like Get early. ready. The only issue is the Lions are in their division, and so are the Packers. That's yep. right. And so are the Vikings. That's yeah. NFC North. Great I, division. Yeah, it's yep. all of a sudden become that. Uh, speaking of, you know, conferences, divisions, and quarterbacks, right now, currently, there is a quarterback that is undefeated against Ohio State, and he's from the University of Michigan. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Actual national champion. d has got a question for you, Kirk Herbstreet. Yeah, no winner. Uh, we, we were boosts on the ground, I think, for his last two games. Uh, J.J. McCarthy, when he goes to that next level, you kind of talked about it earlier, system or building your team around a quarterback and changing that system. He had a great system in Michigan, obviously Sean Moore and what he did with the run game. In some games, he didn't have to put a lot on his shoulders. But what do you see the ceiling being for J.J. McCarthy, who now we're hearing post-combine could be in that top three, four pick range? Yeah, I I think a big thing with him, just watching him these last three years, is, you know, you know, and you know this better than anybody defending these quarterbacks. We can sit here and break down film all we want, but but you know, there's a guy that has an infectious personality. He's a winner. He kind of has, as they say, like that it factor. Uh, this kid has that. Like, say whatever you want about his his game. Like, I'd want him to be my quarterback because of how he makes everybody around him believe. Now, the system that they put in with him, I I can't wait to see where he goes because you better have, kind of like what Michigan had, that balanced attack, offensive line, which is a rare commodity in the NFL, but an offensive line that can win a line of scrimmage, you can run the football. If you have that and you pick J.J. McCarthy, the sky's the limit. This guy is outstanding where it's not all on him and we're going to run like what Kyler Murray does with the Cardinals. You know, like like if you can build an offense where you can have, like I said, a balanced attack where he can go play action, he can throw on early downs, and you better respect the line of scrimmage. And I don't know who that would be in those first 10 or 15 picks. I don't know who would fit that as far as who has a need. But that kid... There are a lot of these guys, if they go to the right spot, I mean, Penix, you saw what he did at his, his workout. Four five. Oh, Nick. He ran a 4-5, yeah. Herbie. I don't know four if you heard five. that. I know, and he can he can sling it. You got Bo Nix. A lot of these guys are just kind of afterthoughts because of Drake May and Jaden Daniels, who I think could be the best one of the bunch. Okay. I mean, this is a hell of a year. This is going to be a fun crop of quarterbacks to look back at three, four, five years down the road and to see, like, who hit, who didn't, because – the odds are stacked against them. If you just go back yeah. to the last 15 oh, yeah. or 20 years, these guys typically, if you have five guys, if two of them hit, it was a good a good year. So the odds aren't in their favor. But, man, when you just look at these guys and watch them, what they did in college, a lot of them have a ton of reps. A lot of them played a lot of football. A lot of them went through some pain. Like what Caleb Williams did by, by leaving Oklahoma and going to USC, not winning every game. J.J. McCarthy battling, trying to bring Michigan up and over Ohio State, winning big bowl games. I mean, they've been challenged. They've had a ton of reps. I'm a big, 
how many reps have you played in college, guy? And all these dudes uh, that are coming out. Think about Bo Nix, what he did at Auburn, trying to fulfill a lifelong dream of his to play for Auburn. Didn't work out. Lost a ton of games. He had to go all the way out to Oregon. And then it's he took off in those two years. So I just think that all these guys have a great story and have hit a lot of adversity and played a lot of football. And I think that that helps them when it comes to trying to project if they'll make it in the NFL. I think so, too. You know, scars, calluses, that develops yeah. maturity and everything like that. A lot of football, though. You've been saying that for like the last couple of years during these draft nights. Seems like the people who have seen a lot or gone through a lot, it's helping them. You know, you look back at like, we don't want to point out, the, but Trey Lance didn't play a lot of football. Nope. Yeah. Didn't, did not play a lot of football. So whenever he gets there, it's like, oh, he can still develop so much or whatever. But can he? And is he going to get the time to do it in real reps in actual football? And he never did. Now he's at Dallas still. People forget that. Mm -hmm. But then some guys who play a lot of ball. C.J. Stroud played mm -hmm. a lot of ball. <clears throat> and yeah, also Stroud had some pain. C.J. Stroud, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, play a lot of ball. Now, one of those guys played a lot of ball you're talking about. Tone's got a question for you. Yeah, Herbie, it was months ago. Uh, that you were on this show and said, and we're just talking about Jaden Daniels and potentially you you were talking about him. You said watch Army it. Navy. Yeah, it, was that what it was? Yes, yeah. Army Navy. And you said he's going to rise and he has, and now some people are coming out and saying he's there. There they are. There, he is their number one coming out. Do you still feel that way now that uh, Caleb Williams is is Chase's uh, mentor down there? Uh, do you are you still that high on on Jaden Daniels and and why is that? Man, Jaden Daniels, as, as the as the NFL game evolves and changes and becomes, again, doing a lot of college, a lot of NFL, it used to be the NFL filtered down into the college game. And now you can make a very strong argument that, that these NFL offensive minds are frustrated with trying to get the college quarterback to learn, like we talked earlier about the NFL system, the seven-step drop, play from the pocket. I'm not saying that still doesn't exist. I'm just saying I think the smart guys are learning, hey, we've got to start running some of this, This whether it's RPO or you're running some kind of version of what you see on Saturday. And now you're seeing these guys that do that, you're seeing them have a lot of success. So I think with the way the game's evolving, the ability to be that dual threat is, is essential if you want to go to that next level. And Jaden Daniels, man, he is so electrifying. And another guy – Started his freshman year at Arizona State. I called a game his freshman year, and he played Oregon. They were an underdog at home. He ends up beating Justin Herbert, which was a great game for him.